non viewers. Okay, according to this, uh, it's working. According to the Agora channel. Ah, we're live again. Okay. I think you. Oh, no, nothing right on Mama. That's before I even started. Alright. Now I see how this works. Okay, I'm going to start again from scratch. And, uh,. <coughs> Does anybody want to tell me if they heard anything I just said? I just saw the last mo the last uh, note was... Oh, here we go. 11 a.m. This is very weird. Okay, 11 a.m. is the last note. Oh, these are in this order. Okay, I was really reading from the top. Okay, here we are. I'm getting on the bottom. Ooh. Here in C. Okay, it's 11 11. Okay. <laughs> She's back and has no map. Yeah, I'm still working on my new camera. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've heard all about me. If you want to know about me, carolmore.net or secession.net. Secession.net needs updating. Okay, I'm going to assume you're still hearing and seeing me. Where was I? Libertarian decentralism as a philosophy. As opposed to just a strategy to devolving government to lowest level. It means that individuals are the source of the political structure. They join or create independent communities that then network and confederate regionally, even worldwide, on different networks, different confederations, as necessary. And by communities, I mean not just small enclaves, but towns, counties, neighborhoods and cities, cities themselves, as their members decide to define them. Libertarian decentralism does not recognize pre-existing political entities, which largely are brought together by force. However, it does recognize the right of individuals to accept these historical political entities as the basis of their community. Okay, let's see our way. The libertarian decentralist alternative is tens of thousands of independent autonomous communities worldwide, networking and confederating as they need to. Um, this talk is about visualizing the alternate constitution that these diverse communities, and we know they would be very diverse, and networks and confederations of communities might have, what kind of constitutions, structures they would decide to have. So I'll describe in detail the purposes the communities might be formed for, how their size and boundaries will be determined, uh, the alternate political ideologies, uh, that they might have, and uh, some of the alternative ways they may organize their various functions. The point here is diversity. When we're talking about diversity, the basic principle is that governance and political organization are all experiments. <coughs> Thomas Jefferson wrote in 1796, this I hope will be the age of experiments in government, and that their basis will be founded in principles of honesty, not of mere force. And we need another age of experiments in government again, because obviously the forms we have around the world right now, except here and there, and don't ask me where that is, aren't working. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. Let me see if I'm working here. Am I working? Live. Okay. I, okay. So... <coughs> Just to talk a tiny bit about how they're not working, I think we all know that uh, we really have rule by the special interests and for the special interests. Corporate, military, industrial, professional, union, government, bureaucrat, and even foreign government lobbyists who have a stranglehold on our political processes and suppress our rights, steal elections, loot taxpayers, destroy economies, foment war, promote terrorism, and inevitably <coughs> will bring us to nuclear war. This is why I had this big map with all these nuclear targets on here. Because that's the bottom line. The bottom line is that at some point, uh, India, China, Rick Perry wants to attack China, probably. You know, and not to mention the Mideast, which, and Iran, and oh my god. Uh, yeah, so I think we're going to end up with uh, decentralism anyway. The nuclear world wars will destroy the large nation states. Uh, if we're lucky, we can... Get, really start getting a philosophy out there that will grab people so that when the Arab Spring, they're having an Arab Spring, 
they're going to kind of an, uh, an alternative besides what we have now, you know, representative democracy, majority rule, which ends up being special interest rule for the special interest by the special interest. But just supporting uh, the idea and value of individual liberty is not enough. We can't say if people want more liberty and less government, then we'll have more liberty and less government using the current constitutional system. Sorry, Ron Paul. You can't say go back to the original constitution will be okay. Oh, sorry, Ron Paul, that's where I meant to say that. Experience has shown it was corruptible because it was corrupted. And again, I believe that's because majority rule and re representative democracy lead inevitably to minority rule. And dealing with that issue is one of the most important points that I'll make when I'm going through my discussion of alternate constitutions. <coughs> now, just to do some name dropping for those who think I'm making up this libertarian decentralism business, uh, both property, pro-property and uh, left-wing libertarians have identified themselves as libertarian decentralists. And this includes Carl Hess, <coughs> Patrick Sale, Bill Kaufman, John McLaughrey, E.F. Schumacher, Leobel Kaur, and Murray Bookchin. People who have written seriously about either the strategy or the philosophy include J.E. Schubert, Gene Healy, Anthony Gregory, Charles Johnson, Roderick Long, Lou Rockwell, Jeffrey Tucker, Thomas Woods, and me. People who have been described as libertarian decentralists by other people include Thomas Jefferson, Frederick Hayek, Murray Rothbard in the 1960s, Dory Ro Dorothy Day, Felix Morley, Henry George, Ron Paul, Leon Lowe, and Francis Kendall, and the International Society for Individual Liberty. <coughs> actually, I think they, they actually promote it as an actual phrase. So to get the per down to the purpose of this talk, uh, before I do that, let's take a quick look and see if there's any idea if I'm still online here. Anybody want to tell me if I'm, you can see or hear and see me still at 11.17? Uh, 20 people? So I guess that's a good sign. All is well. Yay, you're on. Oh, Charles Johnson, if you're not a libertarian decentralist, uh, you can correct me. <laughs> Whatever I said about you up there. <coughs> okay, the purpose of this talk and the alternate constitutions uh, for independent communities is to help radical decentralists create concrete visions which will appeal to and motivate themselves and others. We may work within the system while we're creating alternatives to it. We can promote decentralist alternatives and strategies, <coughs> and secession, of course, is the big strategy, through education, lobbying, political parties and candidates, as well as secessionist initiatives, secessionist referendums, and even secession-oriented constitution amendments. The organizations and networks working on these may become the basis for new communities and even become systems of parallel governance over time. Uh, it's all an experiment, see what works, and you know, we have to have our own networks to learn from each other what's working. Now some geographically isolated communities might have little or no relations with outside communities, only with individuals they might trade with or whatever. However, most communities, uh, which are landlocked, will end up networking or loosely confederating regionally, continentally, even worldwide to deal with common problems and common issues like criminal justice, self-defense, water, pollution, mutual aid, etc. Uh, networks, just to define, are loose alliances that rely largely on ad hoc task forces. They are often formed to deal with specific problems as they arise and may be dissolved soon after or for less important problems or, you know, projects like International Pink Ribbon, Let's All March Day or whatever. <coughs> uh, confederations, of course, are more permanent decision-making bodies. And as we all know, uh, confederation means members retain the right to secede, which is something not always or even usually true of federations. Okay, so, low. I again talk about purpose, size and boundaries, political ideology, and functions. And this is just an overview, it doesn't answer all the questions, and I'm sure I will miss some of your favorite points, and feel free to um, mention them and I will stick them in the longer version <coughs> as I update secession.net. 
the purpose of communities. Communities may be formed for specific purposes and membership in them and visitation rights to them would differ according to these purposes. Some would be open to all comers, others more restricted to members and their invitees. While discrimination in choice would be respectable, of course, we certainly want to discourage bigotry and hate <coughs> in these kind of communities. And there are some people who are basically uh, using decentralism. They call themselves uh, nationalist anarchists or something, and they actually are promoting racial segregation, that sort of thing, which is extremely tacky. But for the most part, um, you know, people just want to do their own thing and be left alone, and, and that's fine. So some of the purpose would be include that people want to form a community to, to actualize some ideological ideal, economic, social, ecological, religious, feminist, um, you know, racial, ethnic, commonality, or diversity. Some people want to get more diversity into their communities. Uh, technological, maybe theme-oriented, uh, you know, <coughs> Community all based on uh, middle e wearing middle age middle ages clothing, you know, like the uh, the fairs. Uh, so anyway, ideological is one. Obviously, residential communities that emphasize residences that might have schools, a few stores. Uh, commercial uh, that are mostly businesses. Service oriented communities, which could be medical, educational, recreational, wilderness protection or even a penal community where people who have serious problems that have been rejected by all the other communities because of their bad behavior are going to go and get the help they need and probably be kept <coughs> uh, restricted through hopefully nonviolent means. Uh, then we have industrial communities, farm communities, and of course mixes of any or all of the above. Now size and boundaries are next. Uh, what might determine the physical boundaries of communities and, uh, let's see, and of the networks and confederations they form? Um, a large percentage of communities will, in fact, be comprised of pre-existing communities, counties, cities. Over time, people voluntarily may move in and out of various areas to accommodate their personal choices. Um, and, of course, these communities will then choose to confederate or network in regions that approximate, some of them may choose to uh, confederate in regions that approximate the shape of some of the smaller states. <coughs> um, these may self-organize by purpose. Um, Newer communities, uh, brand new communities, and um, and bound with new boundaries may be determined by factors like the optimum size for a particular function, land or housing area actually available, resources of the members, and choices of the members. In forming networks and confederations, uh, one important feature that is not currently use for boundaries, but really should be <coughs> uh, in more cases, is bioregional features like watersheds, um, particularly watersheds, since water is always a big issue, or at least some sort of a, a confederation based just on dealing with water. Oh, I said national anarchists. There, there's a group called National Anarchism. It's an actual philosophy. Yeah, okay, so you can look that up. On, I think it's on Wikipedia. <laughs> okay, now we're going to get into political ideology. So anyway, keep that bioregionalism in uh, as a thought. Is one possible. It could be the, you know, the ecological uh, confederation or network. You know, we're all, we're working in that. We've hardly even gotten going yet, you know. Okay, political ideology. I basically define three. One is authoritarian. That's what we've had and we still have. Arbitrary or objective law, which is made or discover, uh, which is uh, discovered by religious leaders or made by secular authorities. <coughs> and uh, obviously we have a problem with that. The next is a, a political ideology based on contractual or consensual law or contract. 
and that's what many libertarians, most libertarians are into. It's a law that rises, arises out of a consensus of the community or out of contractual agreement between individuals. Um, it could also include naturally and freely evolved common law, private commercial law, or laws of voluntary associations. And uh, this, of course, is known as polycentric law because it, it's law that comes from many centers of activity and interest. Then we have anarchic, which is a strictly voluntary association, though when you start having rules and regulations and sanctions, uh, well, that's a whole philosophical issue over there. Now, panarchic, that's another one, <coughs> which is each individual or household actually adopts a different legal system while staying in their same locality. So that's a whole experiment that well, I mean, if you think in terms of your credit cards, we all have the different credit cards, but it's one of those things that has to be tried out to see how it would work. A proprietary community, of course, would be a, a rental. Basically, you would rent from a corporation or a, a co-op, even a nonprofit, but you sign on to obey the rules. Then a, condi a condominium cooperative or other nonprofit association that has more than memberships uh, making the rules. Um, and then, of course, number three is democracy. And um, democracy does mean rule by the people. It's not necessarily a bad thing. And, in fact, even a contractual society, community, may end up with situations that they don't expect. And they will have to come up with some sort of democratic, uh, I'm just looking at the chat right now, democratic system. But uh, I basically see two kinds of government under democracy, which is the limited government and the interventionist government. Uh, the limited government, of course, looks at negative rights, no slavery, involuntary servitude, no denial of freedom to exit, uh, freedom of speech, religion, assembly, etc., due process. Interventionist government uh, will tend to have something called positive rights. Uh, rights to uh, minimum food, clothing, shelter, right to education, employment, forbidding of discrimination, etc. And as long as the members choose that and they don't go trying to enforce it on other communities, except maybe by boycott or protest, um, hey, that's what freedom's all about. Um, yeah, and this discussion of, of what's voluntary is the, the thing is, of course, once you start getting into a situation with more and more rules and regulations and sanctions, uh, you have to be careful. That's all I can say. It's a slippery slope. I think it's definitely a spectrum between voluntary and not voluntary, and you have to be careful. All right, now we're into functions. So I define basically, <coughs> I think, four functions here. Three of them are pretty standard. The first is to actually define the membership and the rights, including a Bill of Rights. The second is some sort of legislative system, be a contract or democracy. The third is going to be the administration, uh, executive branch. The fourth is conflict resolution and or justice, you know, the judicial branch. All right, to go back up here to the top, defining membership and rights. <coughs> which will help people decide if they want to enter in the first place. In other words, if you get together to start a community, the first thing you'll do is define memberships and hopefully rights, and then from there get into your legislative, administrative, judicial decision-making. Uh, so the membership is who can belong and what criteria do they have to fulfill and probably who can visit and under whose species. Uh, obviously, a Bill of Rights is extremely important. So a very strong Bill of Rights is something that we have to, we have to promote. I mean, we know that de under decentralism, we can end up with thousands of fiefdoms. So we are promoting, I mean, libertarian decentralism promotes libertarianism as well as decentralism. And it says that, sure, you can have a little government in your neighborhood. You can't force it on anybody else. But make sure you have your Bill of Rights. Make sure, uh, I have other things that I'll discuss besides the Bill of Rights, to protect yourself from 
you know, a quasi-libertarian or a slightly statist community becoming a fiefdom ruled by a dear leader, which is very easy to, very easy to happen. I mean, any, anybody who's been in a political group, there's always somebody who's willing to be the dear leader, and unfortunately some of them have very good political skills, very good at organizing their followers and beating down anybody who objects. And I'm usually one of the objectors, but, but I've had many adventures. <laughs> All right. So, example of the things in this Bill of Rights are freedom of association, movement in and out of the community, equal political rights of members to access community-related information and to participate in community decision-making, procedural rights, right to trial and due process, right to counsel, right of appeal, no cruel and unusual interrogation or punishment. <coughs> uh, some guarantee there will be uh, emphasis on restitution and reform, not punishment. Uh, restitution for any wrongs done by community leaders, in other words, get rid of sovereign immunity. Uh, some references to the rights of children are those rendered incompetent through illness. Recognition that the individual is joining the community that will not give it, oh, that recognition that the community is not going to give up its right to secede from a confederation. So that you don't lose your right to secede politically. Uh, ensuring that individuals who do disagree with some new rule or policy or tax that maybe, you might have 95% of people agree with it. The 5%, you have to give them, I guess it's a fear exit rule that they're given sufficient time to settle their affairs, get a fair price for their property or business, and leave the community. So now we get the legislative system. So basically, one is contract, the other is democracy, and the third is a combination of the both. When uh, the contract, you have your basic contract, and then um, contingencies are dealt with through some democratic process. <coughs> So contractual rules and contingencies may be in a propriety community, in an association. Um, democracy, it, I actually talk about that more. I mean, we're all familiar with a, a, a number of contractual alternatives, and we have a lot of ideas on that. Uh, the thing that people probably, uh, I, I would like to talk about more to libertarians, because they tend to distrust democracy is that there are ways to make it work when you need it and there are people who like meetings i mean i tend to like meetings at least i used to i, I got a little burnt out the last 10 years uh in the last couple of years from 10 years of meetings uh but there are people who enjoy going there and sitting with the group and making decisions and that's fine i mean it's a personality difference and that's what diversity is all about so some people are going to choose democracy and the thing for us as libertarians is to make sure that <coughs> they don't get sucked into something that again becomes authoritarian, that becomes a state that grows and starts to take over and impose itself on others, which is the history of humanity. So that's why it's important for libertarians to understand that there can be good methods of democracy and they encourage people who like democracy to use those. Um, Okay, now I'm confused at what the heck I'm talking about here. Okay, so in a democracy, uh, you might have an uh, elective representative with flexible charters. In other words, a, a usual democratic governance versus an elected board members, which have the narrower contracts and covenants. I'm getting to the part that I just wrote real late last night. Uh, the important thing, though, we want to talk about is representative versus direct democracy. <coughs> and with representative democracy, a minority of voters, and we're also talking about my, um, majority rule, <coughs> a, a minority of eligible voters will elect an individual who then goes to Congress and through basically a minority of usually less than a majority, because not everybody shows up to vote, will vote in different rules. <coughs> so, um, you basically have to get rid of representative democracy. If you have direct, direct democracy, 
Um, everybody's got to read all the laws, and there aren't going to be as many because you aren't going to get as many people to read them. The other thing is voting uh, supermajority. Get rid of this majoritarianism, which I just talked about. With a supermajority or consensus oriented, we're talking about 80 to 90 percent of everybody has to agree that some law or rule or tax or whatever is needed. Once again, you're not going to have special interests pushing them because uh, they know they're not going to get them passed. And these processes of um, direct democracy and supermajority voting contribute to community harmony because members propose and adopt only rules and policies that enjoy overwhelming support. Now, we'll get to checks and balances on this sort of thing in a little while, since obviously even that can get out of control. <coughs> Another issue is the role of lobbies, polls, and other means of gauging community approval, media. It's something to talk about at some point. Uh, I don't have too much more than a note about it. Now we get into administration. Um, <coughs> personnel will be elected, appointed, hired, volunteer, membership duties. It'll, uh, you'll have um, you know, depending on the roles or the jobs needed for joint projects like landscaping or well digging or daily security or defense from rogue gangs or whatever, <coughs> that will be decided on a case by case basis. That will be decided by community. I was uh, very involved in civilian based defense for quite a while, nonviolent means of defending communities. Uh, protesting, and that's an interesting issue to get into at some point. <coughs> and then, of course, we have finance. Finance, again, we're talking about diverse communities, they'll have different options. They can be rents, contributions, membership fees, fees for services, taxes, if they want to call them that, on land income. But they'll be voluntary taxes, one would hope. And if they aren't, you leave the community. <laughs> um, all right, now we're getting into conflict resolution and or justice. Some people will, and some communities will see all issues as a resolution of a conflict, not a, uh, a black and white, it's crime, it's not a crime, whatever. Uh, others will want a more traditional judicial court system with jury trial. Uh, be it professional jurors or their peers for civil and or criminal matters. Uh, sanctions and enforcement. These can range from publicity to boycott to ostracism to fines, suspension of membership rights, restitution, rehabilitation, incarceration in some uh, the more status communities or if somebody does something, you know, has a few screw looses and becomes uh, uncontrollably violent, but then you can also shift them off to the uh, island where the uncontrollably violent people end up, which probably would happen, and expulsion. And of course all of this can be done going back to administration by uh, private protection agencies, by a community group, by whatever kind of entity you feel your community wants to create. Um, Finally, we're getting to something which I'm calling community oversight and prevention of abuses. I have a feeling there's a short phrase for it. If somebody wants to remind me what it is, do tell. I was a little tired last night. And obviously, as libertarians, we will rec want and recommend, and this is again, as libertarian decentralists, we're promoting decentralism with a libertarian tinge, or a libertarian core, it should be. We want that Bill of Rights. We want everybody to have a real good Bill of Rights. That's number one. Uh, legislatively, we want a limited government philosophy. We encourage that. <coughs> or contractual uh, charter limitations. Sunset provisions on laws and regulations. Minority repeal revision provisions where, let's say, after two months, a law may be passed because people get crazy on some issue. You know, A child is murdered or something, and they come up with some crazy law. Well, two months later, three months later, people have cooled down. You can have 25% of the people say, this law is baloney, it's not working, we repeal it. 
That's what I call minority repeal. Uh, there's always initiative, referendum, and recall where appropriate if a <coughs> community wants to put that into their system. Uh, administratively, some of these checks and balances are strictly limited powers for all officials. Rotation of personnel or term limits uh, to discourage careerism. Inter uh, no pension. I think that's a good one. Don't give them a pension. Internal checks and balances, like outside auditors. Citizen or members oversight committees. Obviously open access to all information for all members. Uh, various ad hoc committees and agencies. Uh, in other words, when you need something done, you create an ad hoc committee that isn't going to perpetuate itself. Uh, give it limited powers and have its existence up for frequent renewal. Uh, judicial, once again, we have rotation of personnel or term limitation to discourage careerism, no pensions. Uh, using professional personnel who want a good reputation and aren't going to be biased in ar mediation and arbitration. Uh, particularly important, I think, is the use of the lightest of sanctions. The heavier the sanctions, the more your power troopers are going to use them to try to intimidate people. So, um, you know, the worst, the worst sanction, of course, should be just kicking them out of the community. Um, but that's a whole other issue. I won't go into too much detail. So I think I've gotten to the end here. And I think I can shut up. I talked longer than I wanted to. Um, okay, I'm going to look at comments here if anybody wants anything they want to. I distrust democracy entirely. I can understand that. That's why I always only talk about super, super majority or consensus. You know, in my own experience, <coughs> I've been in a lot of libertarian groups. Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, the power mongers love it. They are very good at taking over those type of groups. Uh, the best group I've been into, uh, a couple of the best groups I've been into, process-wise, were peace groups that use a consensus process. Anybody could propose, people would discuss, you decide what you want to do, you form an ad hoc committee, you go and you do it, you report back. Now, of course, there isn't a lot of money involved, there isn't a lot of power involved, uh, you know, sometimes you would pass the press release before the whole group, that sort of thing, so you don't do anything too wacky. Um, that sort of thing, I think, can be worked on and developed. Uh, <coughs> so I think there can be, you know, just in my own experience, democratic processes that work better than others. I can't get over that a nation is a state. Well, there's nations. And there are states, and some nations don't have states, and some do. Um, yeah, I, I have been used to saying nation-state just because the state is too. <laughs> uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm cleaning. Oh, yes, I need to clean up, too. It's not a state. It's never volunteered, nor can be. Oh. <coughs> well, there's government and there's governance. And I think uh, libertarians and anarchists are more interested in governance or self-organization or spontaneous organization. The point is we have to prove it works. Most people are used to these more democratic processes. We, it's just like we say to the um, left-wing communists, well, why don't you form a commune and show us how it works? And, of course, they don't because they're not entrepreneurs. <laughs> Well, in the same way, we have to form communities, and sh a voluntary community, and show that we work. And how many, you know, libertar individual libertarian communities are there out there showing that it works? I mean, I want to start one in Virginia, if anybody wants to start one. Okay. Somebody who has enough money to buy some land, but then, oh, there's so many issues to get involved with land and taxes and uh, what you're going to allow or not allow on your land. So the government doesn't steal the land and oh yeah yeah insurance yes lots of insurance yeah that's good severance package I'm gonna t I, in fact I'm gonna copy this so I don't I don't lose it a severance package that's a real good idea uh, for people who feel they've been harmed by democracy that or any other community 
because the contractual community can go bad too because there's some there's something called apparatchiks. I wrote a song, the apparatchiks is everywhere. I think we all know who they are in different groups. They usually, if you're in a brand new group, they become a parent. They tend to be after power and they want the power for their own ego. Uh, and of course, if there's money involved, they usually want to get a piece of it. If they can get a job out of it, they want to get a piece of it. Um, if it becomes a, more of a structure, they want the pension, they want the perks, they want uh, you know a nice paycheck. Uh, they're basically after themselves. They may generally agree with the philosophy, whatever it is. But in the end, they're out for themselves and they work with other people who are out for themselves. And we could name names. You know, especially if you're all the Libertarian Party, you could name lots of names. So apparatchiks, and that's that's something I forgot to put in, and I'm going to, uh, is to, uh, I put it in my original version, my my first talk. Watch out for the apparatchiks. Uh, let's see. Did it insurance? A greater amount of might makes right. Nah, not working for me. Yeah, I agree with that. The thing is government is a land taker. Yeah, I agree with that. <coughs> and uh, if you're Palestinian and you watched uh, Mahmoud Abbas yesterday, he was certainly complaining about that enough. A greater amount of social consensus affords a better chance of what is moral and effective happening. I agree. That's what I agree. Uh, that's why, and if it isn't, people should be free to start up alternatives or compete with them. I agree. That's 100% what I'm talking about here. Um, <coughs> so that's why when I say, if you want democracy, great, but make it consensus-oriented. Make it direct. Stay away from your uh, representatives who are only representing themselves or people who pay them, and your majority rule, which turns into minority rule. Show me the money! Yeah! Show me the money! <coughs> Leave the community entirely and start a new one. Yep! I didn't say I agree. I didn't say start a new one, but that was uh, implicit. That has to be made more explicit. Then they claim the land. I don't know what that means. Who does? Oh, the government. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, that that's what land taxes are. We own the land, uh, we can tax it, we can take it away from you if we want to. So anyway, does anybody know of any good libertarian communities uh, around the country? Um, I know a lot, you know, in the peace movement, uh, especially there's a lot of different ones. Land trusts, where the land trust owns the land and then people put their own property on. So then I guess if you're growing marijuana, they can only take the house and not the land. <laughs> you know, I mean, the current state apparatus, obviously. Um, I know there are communities that set themselves up as um, what's it called monasteries, and when you enter the community, you have to give up all your possessions, just like you do in a monastery. But that way, they they can avoid land taxes and they can communally open own their property. And if somebody gets sued in the community, they don't have to worry about losing the whole the land and property. Um, <coughs> so that's within, of course, the current legal system, some of the things that people have to try to do. Okay, cool, you're doing great. Somebody's doing great, yay! Um, so any thoughts on anybody know of any good libertarian communities? Oh, of course, um, We've got was it Lee Wright who is starting to is he's trying to start the community down in Texas or he was and then I think they got screwed up by some apparatchiks from what I the impression I get and I don't know what he's doing now or was that somebody else I get him mixed up with the other guy yeah it was another guy okay he was those sort of redheads <laughs> um let's see what else. Okay, cool. You're doing great. So, any other thoughts here? I could go back to my other speech and give you some of that. If you really want to listen to me talk, my secession speech as given. Well, I could go into the apparatchiks a little bit more. In fact, all apparatchiks raise your hand. 
Occasionally I've been tempted. Ah, readings on libertarian decentralism. Okay, I'm going to tell you in a second. I actually have been meaning for quite a while to write the libertarian decentralism article on Wikipedia. I worked on lib the libertarianism for a while, and it was insane. It was just the most insane. I had to stop the just you know, people didn't know what they were talking about, and then you had the left wingers fighting with the right wingers, and back and forth and back and forth and back. And one week it would be a left wing article, the right next week it'd be right wing. So I decided I'd just write the libertarian decentralism article. I haven't done that yet. Meanwhile, I am just going to look at my pictures here because I have several books, and this is something that should be at Secession Net. It is not. But in my secession thing, I have some books. Okay, Secession, State, and Liberty. <coughs> uh, the biggest book I recommend is The Breakdown of Nations by Leopold Kor. Uh, to me, that is probably the most formative book after Murray Rothbard's War in Liberty, um, as far politically for me. Because um, he's basically the father of small is beautiful. And these are things I didn't even get into, is scale. That basically, once it becomes too big, it's just it's going to become bureaucratic, and you're going to lose your freedom. So that's that's one of the main reasons I talk about um, community. Now I don't talk enough about it to libertarians because they don't always you know like arguments that are related more to um, you know descriptive experimental experiential evidence as opposed to logic and all that stuff. Um, so besides Breakdown of Nations, now uh, Kirkpatrick Sale wrote Human Scale, which is a huge book, which is a joke that sometimes people make about it. But that's another one to talk about the benefits of decentralism in general. Um, there's my book that hasn't been written yet on libertarian decentralism, and I guess I should hurry up and write it. Uh, I mentioned Secession, State, and Liberty. Secession by what's this, uh, Mr. Buchanan, Alan Buchanan. That's a good one on secession in general. Um, Carl Hess, of course, does very good stuff. Murray Bookchan is probably a little too left wing for most of you, but you could check him out. Uh, Ecotopia, I have not read. Uh, Downsizing the United States by the guy who started the Second Vermont Republic, who also wrote a book on secession. His name is Thomas Naylor. There's something else you could look at. Not as libertarian as we would like. Um, okay, let's see any other questions. Could you type in, out, in, out, in the... Uh, I haven't been able to figure out. I, I tried to... All right, let me see if I can type something in chat. I don't even know where it's hiding on the uh, Oh, here it's on the side somewhere. Alright, I just typed chatting. I don't know if anything happened. I'm on Facebook. I'm signed in, but I, I got it to work last time. I can't get it to work this time. How about a manifesto? That's right. That's what I need. I need people to encourage me. My dogs do not encourage me. My roommate does not encourage me. And I've just gotten sick of political groups. Might take a bit to load. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we'll see. Well, that's one of the reasons I like to form a community, because you need encouragement from other people. You know, in D.C., the libertarians tend to work for organizations that are more conservative than most libertarians, and they tend to be very transient. So we really don't have a much of a group, and I don't have a car, so getting to Virginia or Maryland events is sort of a pain in the neck. So I mostly just, you know, associate with people online, and you need that human contact to get yourself going. So if you live in the tri-state D.C. area, I have been thinking of getting a secession group going, and there's nothing like a little, you know, having real people to write for, and especially you get a little competition, you know, sort of competitive going with somebody, I'll be more likely to write it. And that's one of the reasons I'm hooked on Wikipedia, because you get feedback from people, you know. It's a, it's a means of communication, but the uh, problem is half the people are idiots. Idiots. <laughs> don't report me to Wikipedia. <laughs> okay, let's see, what are we getting here? I don't want to talk too long. Okay, any final last thoughts? Thank you, Nick.
I've just written you down again. I'm going to save that before I lose it. <coughs> so thanks for listening. Thank you, George, for putting together this wonderful event again. And I think we need more of these. I'd like to put some together just on secession. Oh, Skype. Skype. That's something else. Um, I'm on Skype. What am I? I think I'm Carol Moore, 1776. I think that's what I am. I'm not sure. Or else I'm Carol Moore, uh, 1776. Oh, yes. Am I still connected? Yes. Now we're 1776, so I'm also going to try to start Skyping with people <coughs> as a way of getting the secession thing going. So, Nick, Skype me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sign off now and give the next person a chance. So, it's been great, and we'll do it again sometime. <laughs>